thank you um, um, and welcome uh, for my talk. And thank you very much for inviting me this great chance for sharing my research result with these nice people. Uh, okay, let's start. So my research topic is about dating rocks. So I'm dating granites because I'm studying granites. Um, so it's all about the story when the granite comes of age. So first of all, I want to uh, give my thank to my courses and Monash University where I got my PhD and Igru Economic Geology Center in the uh, James Cook University where I'm working. Here's the contents. Do you know the oldest mineral in the world? It's a 4.4 billion years of zircon found in Western Australia. Uh, so the mineral is zircon. Uh, by the way, I, I will call, um, oh, sorry. I will call million year into M year or MA. Um, so the size of the, this mineral is 50 micrometers. How amazing that this, this small size of the, the grain includes almost the entire history of the Earth. So this is stated by a uranium lead isotopic um, age dating. So uh, what is isotope, by the way? So isotope is just one of the elements, item, and we can find in the periodic table. So for example, for this carbon 12, 13, it's a different isotopes. If you see the core of the uh, atom, you can see uh, protons and neutrons, and 12 means six protons and six neutrons. And carbon-13, the only difference is it has one more neutron, so I will just go with a fatty friend. Um, for the uranium isotope, it's, uh, it's the same, except uh, the uranium isotope is really unstable and decays by itself. So we call it a radioactive decay, and we call parent isotope for the previous one, and the daughter isotope for the byproduct. So this is the example of what happens in the mineral. So when the mineral crystallized, it, the age is of course zero, and um, parent isotope percentage is 100. But as time goes by, it produces daughter isotopes. So um, the percentage of daughter isotope is increasing. So what I do is I collect uh, parent isotopes and daughter isotopes and get the ratio and get the age information because it happens with a certain time scale. So it sounds really exciting. We get the, the oldest age from the zircon. Why don't we do more? That's what exactly scientists did. For the couple of decades, they used zircon. And zircon is now the dominant method for dating. It's almost nine, more than 90% of the or age dating study. We can actually use different minerals if the mineral has a uranium but zircon is the number one. And for the granite, I said I'm studying granite. It's more serious. So granite is, uh, um, where is, okay. Granite is the, the magma derived rock. It chills deep underground and chills and make the granite. It forms a platform we step on. Uh, and the study area is Mount Buller. We know Mount Buller. And I visit the year in the summertime. Um, so I collected uh, granite and get the, get the zircon. Um, granite naturally have many, many zircons, so it's obviously that zircon is pre predominant, I mean, by far the most popular way for dating granites. But I want to say something different side of this technique. Is it that perfect? Is it that perfect to avoid any other um, age dating methods and take the 90, more than 90% of dominance? I would say no, because it also has many problems. The, the biggest problem for this one is age spreading. If you see this age plot, you can see the, the ages in the tick marks. And for this example, the age is spreading from 900 to 780 million years. And for this example also, the age is in the x-axis and age spans over tens of millions of years. So think about your kid is 20 plus minus 20 years old. It's nonsense. 
Uh, the, the aim of the goal is this, to address the, the current limitations of silicon age dating, and somehow I already did. And for the solution, I can say there's two solutions. First one is we improve the current uh, technique, and the second one is finding another way for dating. So what I'm going to do is I use uh, apatite and titan. It's a different minerals for a kind of extra minerals for testing um, the possibility. So the method I'm going to use is um, I use a certain method to the zircon to improve the technique and use the same technique to the apatite and titanite, different minerals. So what technique do I use? I use two in one laser analysis. Just one laser analysis for getting isotope composition is pretty normal. We just jab the, jab the laser on the surface of the granite, uh, surface of the grain, and get the isotopic composition. But this one is different. We get the trace element additionally. So how does it work? It works like light detector test. Do you know how it works? It gives you an electric shock if you tear a lie. Um, the one of the hypotheses that uh, we get the erroneous age for the grain is crystal contamination or corruption, I say. So if the, the surface is crystal clean, the, the age out of it um, based on the isotopic composition would be reliable in trace elements as well. But if the, the surface is stained and the, the age out of it, uh, you would get a good amount of electric shock. Uh, this is the result um, from the zircon. For the zircon uh, improvement, we get the trace element is the least of the trace element and concentration, and different patterns of compositions. And I separate uh, these compositions, and these these two one I filtered out because this is the re uh, result of contamination. And after this filtering process, the the data is significantly improved. Uh, compared to the previous one was spreading a lot, now it's much focused. And the same thing um, applied in the apatite and titanite. And this is the result. Uh, compilation of different ages from zircon, titanite, apatite, and the previously known age for the study area. Before the filtering, uh, the age is overlapping each other, so we cannot actually see uh, much difference. But after the filtering, we get a more um, constrained age range. And now we can see interesting relationship. Zircon, titanite has a similar age range, and apatite is somewhat younger. And the previous study uh, that defined the age of the Mount Pular is obviously younger than what I've done in this study. So the conclusion, um, we found that Titanite is a good alternative for zircon, apatite less so. And now I know that trace element monitoring, filtering works really well, improves dating, dating quality a lot. So for the significance, if you remember the younger age about the, the previous study of the granite, it actually same for the every different granite in the Victorian area because it used an uh, older technique. So if they use the, the technique I uh, pro, uh, suggested in this study, you will get a different age. So I would say it's time to understand um, the real history of the platform we step on. And uh, the second thing is I want to say um, uh, another fact in this technique. Uh, there's actually a couple of ways for the age dating but it follows a trade-off relationship, like faster, cheaper one is less uh, accurate, and the slow, expensive one have a more accuracy. But um, with this technique, with this uh, trace element filtering and monitoring, I would say this technique is now faster, cheaper, and even accurate. Thank you for listening. Um, any question, comments, welcome.